So ankylosing spondylitis is an uh, inflammatory arthropathy and enthesopathy predominantly involving the axial skeleton. In the axial skeleton, it mainly involves the vertebral bodies. Uh, initial phases, it will uh, involve the thoracolumbar region. Then later, after 20 years of uh, the ankylosing spondylitis, even the cervical involvement is seen commonly seen. Uh, other than the the vertebral bodies, what involves is the the sacroiliac joint. The sacroiliac joint, in, specifically in the sacroiliac joint, it involves the anterior inferior part or inferior half to inferior two third part is or inferior one third part because of it is made up of the sacroiliac joint so here we have sacroiliac joint involvement which we, in which we will see erosions we will see ankylosis of the sacroiliac joint other than these uh, the vertebral bodies and sacroiliac joints the other uh, the axial uh, joints the central joints that are involved are the sternoclavicular joint the costochondral joint and the costovertebral vertebral joint and the pubic joint, the pubic symphysis. These are the joints which are involved. So it is involving the vertebral body, the sacroiliac joint, the sternoclavicular joint, the costovertebral vertebral joint, the costo uh, chondral joint. So these are the central joints are involved. When the peripheral joints, uh, when it comes to the peripheral joints, it will involve shoulder joint and the hip joint, the, the large joints are involved. The usually small joints the small joints are not involved in the ankylosing spondylitis. So as we know that the ankylosing spondylitis is an inflammatory arthropathy and enthesopathy predominantly involving the axial skeleton, the one of the most important feature in this is the presence of the syndesmophytes. The syndesmophytes, what we are seeing here, the connecting the two end plates of the vertebral bodies, is a one of the classical feature that we see in the uh, in the ankylosing spondylitis. These are nothing but the ossification of the outermost fibers of the annulus fibrosis of the intervertebral disc. And the second most important thing is the involvement of the bilateral symmetrical joint. A diagnostic clue for ankylosing spondylitis is the vertical syndesmophytes along with the bilateral symmetrical sacroiliitis is a diagnostic uh, for uh, the ankylosing spondylitis. Again, in the this image, we can see that the bilateral uh, syndesmophytes because of which the, uh, there is a fusion of uh, the vertebral bodies. So what we have here is a typical bamboo spine and also you can see some erosions in the sacroiliac joint. So this is a case of the ankylosing spondylitis. So this is one part of the ankylosing spondylitis that is the inflammatory arthropathy. The second part is the enthesitis or uh, the inflammation and the attachment of the tendons and muscles and ligaments and that's what we see here is we can see some hyperintensity along this muscle and along this pubic bone. So this is again a uh, example of enthesitis and here we can see some inflammation along the bilateral sacroiliac joint. So the most important feature is the syndesmophytes, uh, the bilateral sacroiliitis along with the osteopenia, the bamboo spine and other features. In this image again we can see that there is the, the, the vertical syndesmophyte, there is nothing but the ossification of the annulus fibrous is the annulus fibrous. The outer fibers of the annulus fibrosis uh, will undergo ossification which will later uh, will be leading to the ankylosis of the joint. So here again we can see that there are some uh, uh, syndesmophytes, vertical syndesmophytes in their earlier stages. And the other feature that we see here is there is some amorphous bone deposition here which will uh, uh, which is not it is an immature syndesmophyte which will later become a well formed syndesmophyte like we see here and also uh, we can see some osteitis that is happening in the corners uh, this type of osteitis is called as the shiny corner sign again one more classical feature that we see uh, in the ankylosing spondylitis. The other features uh, the other features in the ankylosing spondylitis includes the syndesmophytes initial ossification also involving now the anterior longitudinal ligament and also there will be ankylosis of the joints the ankylosis of the joints we can see and the uh, one more important feature is there is complete diffuse osteoporosis that we see in the ankylosing spondylitis that's what we see here complete osteoporosis is seen 
and uh, there is uh, the bone production that the hyperosteosis is seen along around the odontoid process and the anterior arch of the c1 vertebrae we can see that there are uh, hyperosteosis happening and because of all this there is atlanto axial subluxation the mri findings include the osteitis of the corners of the vertebral body which will appear hyper on tattooated images and hyper on the stir images like how we see the hyper intensities along the corner of the vertebral body which is which is the same thing that we saw in x-ray as the shiny corner sign now, if this hyper intensity is, is present in the center of the uh, end plates uh, in the junction of the uh, the vertebral body and the disc now this is called as an anderson's sign anderson's lesion so we have the romanas lesion uh, what we see in the corner and if it is present in the center we call it as anderson's lesion so we have two types of the lesions that we uh, commonly see because of the osteitis that is happening but if in case this is looking very subtle and if we even if we are missing it we can see some hyper intensities along the interspinous region now this is because of uh, the enthesitis that is happening the enthesitis is commonly seen in the interspinous ligaments and it is uh, seen around the pelvis in the pelvis mainly the greater trochanter the lesser trochanter the pubic rami uh, and the attachment of uh, the any of the, the muscles in the pubic bones now in the this image again we can see that the interspinous ligament is showing hyper intensity with no evidence of any uh, uh, the syndesmophytes or any other findings again in this uh, the same patient we can see that the the inferior pubic rami involved along with the origin of some adductor muscles are showing hyper intensities a uh, classical uh, findings of uh, enthesitis that we are seeing here this is again showing that diffuse osteoporotic changes with a uh, few fracture lines uh, we can see uh, undisplaced fracture is again one of the classical finding in ankylosing spondylitis even in this mr we can see some undisplaced fractures here which is leading to some uh, at the same level we can see some edema in the cord uh, and also the interspinous ligament showing some enthesitis that is the edema is uh, seen here so this image is showing again uh, bilateral asymmetrical joint involvement uh, bilateral asymmetrical joint involvement on the left we can see that on the left uh, we can see that there is uh, some erosions and some sclerotic changes are seen whereas on the right we can see some indistinct margin is seen on the right side we can see some indistinct margin and if you see on the second image we can again see that the bilateral uh, involvement of the joint showing ero erosions and also the symmetrical uh, sclerotic changes so er, this is ankylosing spondylosis has usually the symmetric joint involvement but earlier stage might have asymmetric involvement also and also we can see some bump uh, in the the femoral neck head junction uh, which is because of the the reactive hypertrophic bone formation and this should not be confused with the cam type of the deformities again we can see here the uh, syndesmophyte at the earlier stage formation the same patient after 10 years we can see that it has become complete ankylosis or uh, in the vertebral body the facets and even the spinous process all have been fused uh, this is how the disease progresses MRI of the same patient is not showing uh, so much of changes in the vertebral bodies uh, the it is not uh, but however we can see some uh, fusion of the spinous process and also some the, the inflammatory changes in the vertebral bodies but it is not showing as uh, severe as it was uh, in the x-ray that we saw uh, but in the when you do the CT, we can see that there is some erosive changes that we are seeing at the sternoclavicular joint. At the same time, there is fusion uh, at the costovertebral junction, uh, which is again the most common site of the involvement of the ankylosing spondylitis. So overall, if you see ankylosing spondylitis, so there will be osteopenia, generalized osteopenia. Thus, there will be sacroiliitis, the symmetric sacroiliitis. There will be osteitis which is seen as either Romanas lesion or Anderson's lesion. Romanas in the anterior the corners, the Anderson's lesion is seen in the middle of the vertebral end plate at the junction of the vertebral end plate and the vertebral disc. 
the same thing as the, the Romana sign is seen in the X-ray as the shiny corner sign and eventually there will be fusion where the, the syndesmophytes are formed which will fuse to form uh, the bamboo spine which might uh, undergo fracture what we call it as the carrot stick uh, fracture uh, along with this there will be enthesopathy that is inflammation across the attachments of the ligaments uh, muscle uh, tendons and uh, the, uh, the muscles uh, muscles which is seen as the interspinous ligament hyperintensities or the hyperintensities uh, which are seen along the pubic symphysis the pubic rami uh, the greater trochanter lesser trochanter and the interspinous ligaments so this is how uh, the ankylosing spondylitis presents with predominant involvement of the axial skeleton uh, and some uh, peripheral joints like the shoulder and the hip uh, with anthesopathy. So this is how classically uh, ankylosing spondylitis presents.